Welcome back, guys. We have Nick and Reese in the podcast. How are we doing? Pretty good. Good? good. Yeah? Practice yeah. was good? Yeah, it was great. Good. Okay, we're going to get into UAH recap. Obviously, like, really awesome. Nick, you had your first career hat trick. You had an, Reese, you had an assist, but all around, good good win for the team. I mean, double win. You're going into Alabama, and you're knowing it's not going to be as hard as Bemidji or Bowling Green or any team like that. But you guys did, in the first night on Friday, break a record, record or have, like, you guys' first double digit since 1998. Yeah. Yep. I think something like that. It was like 11 back at the time. So that's like huge. And it was just a dominant game from all you guys. It was kind of a little bit the night of the Germans too, <laughs> I would oh, yeah. say. So what went so well for you guys on Friday night? You know, uh, clearly we had some pretty big, pieces, uh, pretty big pieces of our puzzle back in the lineup. Uh, you know, clearly Mark, he was out for, I want to say, seven, eight games. Uh, came back, didn't skip a beat, uh, forward of the week. So, I mean, congratulations to him. And Souter also, he was uh, – Rookie of the week, so he stepped up pretty big too after missing a couple games. And you know, uh, when you get some chemistry going, Julian and Parker were pretty good this weekend, also. And you know, up and down the lineup, everybody contributed for the most part. So it was pretty special for just from everybody's standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of off what Riv said too. Uh, just it being senior weekend as well, we uh, the younger guys wanted to kind of make it their weekend. You know, play well for them, and I think it's just an unselfish weekend by everyone, and it just showed with both games. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even if you look, you had, you know, Parker and Julian Friday had two goals and assist. Mark had a goal and two assists. Everyone was going and having an assist and, you know, feeding it to each other and trying to get, you know, you had the hat trick and on Saturday and Mark had two goals and everyone was working for themselves, but also working as like a team together. But was there anything on those nights that you think maybe you could have worked on a little bit better or was it just an overall like solid, solid couple games? I mean, it's hard to work on something like uh, after a weekend like that. Yeah. You, uh, I mean, we always just try to focus on little stuff. Uh, we really focused throughout the couple, past couple of weeks and scoring five on five, and I mean, we did a great job of that. I mean, we could take a little bit more. Uh, we can do a little bit better job standing out the penalty box. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, one of the steps that our team needs to go in the right direction and uh, just special teams in general. I mean, I think our PK was pretty good for the most part, and our power play was pretty good. But uh, you know, there's always room for improvement in any weekend. So. Like, yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking, Reese? Yeah, I mean, kind of off what he said, uh, I think especially after Friday night coming back Saturday, we wanted to kind of keep playing our game, keep up with that, and don't take any uh, little segments off. But I thought both Friday and Saturday we played a full 60 for the most part. So you guys held Alabama Huntsville to 11 shots on goal on Friday, which is a little bit unheard of, I would say, throughout the entire game. It was just rock-solid defense, and probably Reese could attest for this a little bit more because he's a defender. But what went into such a great defense for you guys, even Friday and Saturday? Um, I mean, I think it starts with the forwards, though. Uh, I mean, they had the puck most of the game. And, yeah. Uh, so when it's like that, we don't really have to defend. And then mm -hmm. uh, on the back end, I think – when they did come down and were in our end, it was kind of just uh, shut it out quick, try to get the puck, and then just give it to the guys up front. Yeah. They did a great job with it. Yeah, you got to give them credit, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the decor did a great job. Uh, even playing with the lead, uh, it's sometimes a little bit mentally difficult to be blocking shots, but I don't think that uh, that part of our game went away. Uh, you saw guys blocking shots when it was 7 nothing, 8 nothing, whatever, like that. So it's a pretty uh, huge testament to all the guys, especially in the back end, and clearly uh, – just shows how much we respect Dryden. We really, uh, we really play for him the majority of the time because he, uh, he's had m many, many games that he's uh, helped a lot. So absolutely, I was even going to go with that third straight shutout for Dryden on Saturday. I mean, what he's playing absolutely rock solid right now. He got um, WCHA goalie of the week this week, and can you guys just talk about his game and how he's doing? He's a gamer. I mean, yeah, absolutely. He, every time he gets his opportunity, he just wants to make the most out of it. Uh, it's, it's been the way since day one here. Um, you know, looking back on last year, we didn't really have a, a set idea on our goaltender situation with uh, three new guys coming mm -hmm. in. So I think ever since then, he's running away with uh, all the opportunity he can. But like I said, he's a gamer. He just wants to win as bad as he can. Yeah, um, I mean, Dryden has kept us in quite a few games. Uh I mean, just some unbelievable stops, and I think that also gives us, especially on the defensive end, just some confidence, like to make try to make plays. And then if we do mess up, you, Dryden usually has your back, so you mm -hmm. just come back and say, hey, "Thanks for that one, Dryden." And I think that just goes a huge way for in games for us. 
Yeah, I've told him thank you a couple times. <laughs> yeah, after, be like, after a bad you. turnover or something like that. Yeah, so if he's listening, thank you, Dryden. <laughs> there we go. So you guys are looking really strong out there, and as you should going into this kind of hockey this late in the game, especially with Bemidji coming up and everything that you have. But, I mean, you can even see it in Huntsville. You guys are making really timely passes. You are making good decisions with the pucks, and, you know, you're maintaining puck possession extremely well. So can you guys just talk about how maybe your game's elevated even since um, – even since you going into the new year, you've only lost one game, and that was with Bemidji. So how has your game elevated a little bit throughout these couple weeks? We're just focusing on getting better, I think. Uh, you know, Coach holds us to a high standard, and even the leadership group and uh, the upperclassmen, we just try to hold this program to a, a new standard and uh, try to grow the culture with uh, with everything we've got. And, I mean, like I said before, there's always room for improvement no matter what. You can win 20 nothing, but you can still pick some flaws out and – Coach brought it up this weekend. You want to learn from uh, your mistakes, but you also want to learn from your successes also. You can't take those for granted, and I think that our, uh, our team's done a very good job with that. I mean, had a couple setbacks in the year, but that's the game of hockey, especially in college. It's a short season. So, I mean, those little setbacks kind of prepare you for the, the overall picture. So I think we've done a good job in, uh, in that yeah, realm. Yeah, absolutely. What are you thinking, Reese? Yeah, I mean, each day, week by week, we try to get better. That's our goal each practice. Uh, paying attention to the little details. I think the coaching staff does a great job of hammering that uh, to us throughout the whole year. So then at this time, uh, it kind of comes natural almost. And then if we do start for them, we coach will come in and kind of tell us, hey, we got to start doing this again. And then we kind of work on that for the week. And I think that goes a huge part to the coaching staff. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I was, and then they, we even like put out a sound bite or something of coach talk, talking about on Saturday, but what is the conversation like during the bench during times? I mean, and even after the games with Hastings, does he just amp you guys up to no level? Does he get on you when you're doing stuff? Or is he just – sometimes I see him over the bench when he gets really upset and he just yeah. like, it's like super red in the face, you oh, know, and yeah. he's like – I can attest for us small people. We're, we're pretty powerful, I would say, and got like maybe a little bit of a shorter fuse. So what is that kind of like for him? Um, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been different with every group mm-hmm. I've been a part of uh, this program. I mean – Looking back at all four years, I mean, he's taken a, a different approach kind of to each team. Um, I would say this year he's kind of let the leadership group handle a lot more than he has in the past because uh, I think that we've built this trust uh, this trust foundation with us and him. And, you know, it's not just the guys that wear the letters. There's guys like Reese and uh, Mackey and there's Dryden. It, the list goes on and on. I mean, I, you can't name just five or six guys. It goes on and on. And so I think uh, – you know, there's times clearly he uh, he can get pretty mad, but then again, that's his job. Uh, when something goes wrong, he try to get us back on the right rails. And I think for the most part, it's been a, it's been pretty good. You know, we uh, whenever he needs to deliver a very assertive message, he does, and you know, we we kind of respond pretty well to that. And uh, we've responded pretty well to it, no matter what he kind of brings to us. So we just try to be flexible and just try to do our best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, kind of like Rivi said. I mean, each year it's been different, and I think that really attest to how good of a coach he is just realizing the differences in each group and understanding uh how each group responds to certain things you know um but yeah i think it's been unreal this year and everything he's done he's pushing the right buttons and uh he's done a great job yeah there's a reason last year that he was chosen to coach you know juniors the juniors world league or something like that remember like hearing that and me not knowing hockey that much last year i was like oh it's not really that big of a deal right and me now knowing i'm like that (laughs) was a big thing right and you know he got 200 wins and under what eight nine years here and he he's doing an incredible job here he's got a rhythm he's got working something working out really well you know so i'm gonna go back in just a little bit more into the game right but both nights were pretty physical. Saturday was really physical. You got some fights going on. You talk about staying out of the box. There was a major call that I thought should have been called on cross-checking with Reggie, but that oh, wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. called that one. I talked to him after the game or in the interview. I was like, so that call was like not okay. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I was, I, was, I was not too happy about that. But can you guys talk about how you kind of made it little, seem a little effortless, right? It looked like the physicality didn't get to you getting 10 nothing on Fridays, you know, 8 nothing on Saturday, you know, playing a game even though they're hitting you and trying to slow your bodies down and trying to keep you out to the perimeter and getting a little physical with you guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like to, or not I, but our whole team, we kind of base our uh, our game around our speed. And, uh, 
you know, that's up and down the lineup. That's not just our forwards. It's our D-man getting up in the rush and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, when you push the pace with uh, when you have possession, it's it's tough for any team. And, you know, the only way to slow a team down is by you being faster and you just uh, possessing the puck as much as possible. So, I mean, I think that was a, kind of our overall goal. But, you know, there's a lot of resiliency when uh, we did lose a puck. Uh, you could tell a lot of guys wanted that puck back. and. Mm. You know, it's a, a testament to all the guys on our team. They they wanted to produce and they wanted to do whatever it takes to win. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. Just, yeah. Every single yeah. time we're doing yeah. the same thing, we're going back and forth. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> I'll give him the first one. Yeah, right? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I know you said it was kind of physical and stuff. And I know we've been kind of working on staying more disciplined as of late. So we, ch- we were talking in the locker room just that you're kind of trying to get us into that and try to make us drop penalties. So I think it was... We were level-headed as a group, too, to not take too many penalties mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good word, level-headed, right? You tried to stay. It's a big word. It's a big word. <laughs> that's a look up at the dictionary, a little Scrabble word in there. Ooh. But, I mean, absolutely level-headed because, you know, you have people trying to slow you down, hit you. I don't know, not maybe even hurt you, but, you know, kind of like the NFL, too. Like, you got that targeting call, and you've got people targeting you from left and right. And it's hard to stay calm and get goals and show them, hey, we're the better team. We're, like, the team that's not going to try to fight back as much, even though... Some of that stuff was like coming out of nowhere. Like that one fight, we were trying to do it back in replay, and it looked like they were just like. Was that with hey, Reggie, you guys? Reggie and JJ? Yeah. Maybe in front of the net. I think oh, yes, maybe. that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Maybe it's because they knew they were out there, <laughs> right? and not and not me and Dad right? <laughs> and, and Zamola. So <laughs> they, they picked like, a good crew to go right? after there. They just literally were like, boom, we're gonna fight. I was like, come on, what is this? This is bush league. Yeah. Like, but so I'm gonna talk about senior night. I mean, awesome moment for you and even like Reese you can talk about you know the impactfulness of this senior group how is it to kind of is it a little bit emotional to kind of see them go off and be like you know this is my last chance with this kind of family that I've been with for how many years and going off of that what were what were you feeling yeah I mean I think it was Sunday night one of the, uh, the videos was first yep. and we're like wow that's cool but then by the end of it you're like wow that's actually pretty sad too at yeah. the same time because when we were freshmen, they were sophomores. We kind of grew up with them. We followed them by example. They were a good group to, uh, you know, just kind of learn from them. And they helped us out quite a bit, especially Riv and Frenchie and those guys. So, yeah, I mean, it was pretty emotional. So coming in the weekend, we knew we wanted to, the younger guys wanted to play well. So that give them the best senior weekend that they could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys did absolutely play well. I mean, seen hat trick, first career hat trick. How does that feel to get that? Because I even said, honestly, I was like, that's not who I thought was going to get the hat trick. I thought Mark was going <laughs> no to like, No one ever says that. No, one ever Don't worry, no one ever says that. Everyone puts me in the corner. <laughs> but seriously. Seriously, no. But, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. But you played absolutely fantastic and laid on in, even in the second and third period. But how was that to get, you know, your whole family in there? Who, I don't think, come to a lot of games, do they? Um, You know, uh, since my brother's been done playing, uh, they've c- come to quite a few this year. Um, I mean, starting off the season with an injury, they didn't come. But... I mean, they wanted to see me compete on the ice and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they've been coming quite often now. And, you know, I got my whole family, my two brothers and my sister, and uh, their better halves came yeah. here also. So we had a pack house uh, for the Riveras. But, you know, it was special. Um, you know, it's, it's moments like that that you don't take for granted. And clearly uh, the hat trick was just something special, and it was awesome. But then you look down the lineup, you see Mark breaking records mm-hmm. also on that same night. He, he was the first one to come off the bench and congratulate me when that happened. You know, like we said earlier, it's a selfless team, and that whole weekend was probably one of the most special moments uh, for me as a player. I mean, it just it was, it was incredible. I mean, you look at the games, like obviously you look at championship games and going to the tourneys and everything like that, that you can look at and say, that's a really special moment. But to have those senior nights, to have a hat trick, to be with your family, to be with the people that you love, your first and second family, I think that was super awesome. To, like we, not that last year we didn't make it super special with the group that we had, but this was a little bit different, right? You've got two McNaughton Cups, you've got, you know, so much statistics with guys that, you know, might be some of the best players to where where the threads coming through. So I think that was super awesome just to see you guys and how you guys played. Yeah, so that was congrats, special for sure. Congrats to you guys. We're going to go you. now wrap it on up with UAH recap, and we're going to go to BSU preview. Big, big game. But I'm going to start off with Reese because I think he knows where this is going. Interviewed you one night when we played BSU. I mean, little brotherly rivalry, rivalry got you going on. I mean, how does that – I mean, like, again, just, like, so weird to think about that you guys are – 
plan for something and not even like a series right it, this is big if you get one point you clinch the cup right this is if you, this is important and especially them going up to anchorage tying which i was watching intently every time i was like oh my god oh and i like because it was it was a chance because you know oh, no yeah. team has out white outright swept up there you guys got tied under foreseen circumstances yeah. so much going on but it was definitely a chance for that to happen but how does that kind of feel to be like okay this is a really heated moment between my brother and i yeah i mean uh it was a little weird we played them in like in the u of m tourney mm -hmm. there uh then we they came down here and we played but uh i mean after those first couple of shifts of the u of m tourney kind of it's just a normal game and especially mm -hmm. having that next weekend under the belt too it just kind of in the rear view mirror like yeah. obviously we'll text a little bit before a game and after the game but when it comes down to it it's a huge weekend for us as a team and that's really not uh my focus obviously is on yeah. trying to get those three points on friday absolutely so talk about getting points how important is it just to get this number one seed with one point it's Obviously, you can say, well, Marissa, duh, it's extremely important. Like, what do you mean? We're going to clinch, clinch the cup. <laughs> but, I mean, I feel like this could come down to this could happen. This could happen. This is this is a throw it up in the air kind of thing. Because when you look back on this year in Bemidji, you know, you beat them 4-1 or you do this or they beat you. It's very kind of wishy-washy and you don't know which team is going to come out with a win on the night because you guys are so similar and so powerful. So... But how important is it just to play your A game, play your best, and get that point, maybe even the first night or even in the second night? Yeah, I mean, clearly any uh, any time you can race for a championship, it's important. Uh, clearly, this is Moloch family. That's going to be a special moment for them mm -hmm. no matter what. And, you know, that's just it's a, that's awesome to see. I mean, I wasn't ever fortunate enough to play uh, against my brothers, oh, but yeah. they played against each other. So, I mean, my family's kind of talked about that kind of that kind of situation before, and they just said how special it was. My dad was torn apart, didn't know what to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, going back to our team, you gotta you gotta think. Uh, you look at our home record in the past couple of years. You know, it's a tough building to play in, and as many games as we can be there, it's it'll be hard for other teams to come in and try to take some points from us. And uh, you know, it's another championship opportunity. I mean. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate enough to have a couple under our belt, but uh, we got to use that veteranship and uh, show the the ropes to the new guys and just show us show them how important it is to carry the the momentum into the mm -hmm. tournament and and ongoing. So absolutely, what are you thinking, Reese? Yeah, I think uh, it's huge, obviously, to get the McNaughton, but at the same time, just having that home ice advantage throughout mm -hmm. the playoffs the last couple of years, uh, it's been one of the tougher buildings to play in. And it's credit to the fans, you know. I mean, look at it when we played. Bowling Green last year in the championship. It took us a while to get the fans yeah. in there, but once that's probably the loudest I've ever he oh heard God. the building. Oh, yeah. It was going crazy in there. So. It was yeah, when they get going, oh, it's yeah. probably tough for their team to play in there. I'm I'm a I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to sports, right? Because I'm, re I'm a realist, maybe even I would like to use. All right. Oh man, I was in there was that situation at Bowling Green. I was also went up to um, Minneapolis Miracle. I was at that game as well for football, and same feelings. Like, I was like, there's no way this is going to happen. There's no way this is going to pull it off. Like, my hopes and dreams. Like, I was so excited for this. And then they both happened. And I was like, oh. Like, you know, it was just, it's electric. Mm -hmm. And when that stuff happens, I mean, do you guys feed off of that? And even going into the question, do you, obviously, you guys want to have this stuff at home, right? How important is it to have these games at home? Because, well, maybe if we get the first and we can get the second, right? And we can kind of trap it and they're in our house, right? So then maybe we can repeat history and we can kind of roll with the punches with that. So how important is it right now to get this stuff and going into the playoffs and get, like, some home ice? Uh, I mean, let alone just being in our home building and the fans, I think it's kind of huge as well to not have to do that travel. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. sleep in your own bed. You have your normal routines you don't have to switch things up i think yeah. that plays a huge role as well as long along with how mm -hmm. good our fans are when we're in our home building yeah you think the same thing yeah i mean uh it's comfortability being at home uh like he said you you, you get your routine and uh you know it's, it's a lot better there's a little bit more freedom uh when you're at home and you, you kind of have your own your own thing going and uh mm -hmm. clearly when you're playing at home the home team wants you to win and yep. everybody's rooting on your side and you saw last year, uh, and even multiple times this year at our at our building, that you get one, you can keep rolling, and it's all it's all a momentum factor. And uh, I think that's something our team is really good at, and uh, mm -hmm. maintaining uh, momentum and even breaking momentum. Uh, say another team scores, we try to focus on, you know, getting the crowd back yep. into it and getting our whole team back into it. So 
any build, any game at home is uh, you can't take those for granted because there's only so few left. So, so I think, oh, just had a thought and it like escaped my mind as the moment I'm trying to say it. Have you ever have that happen? Like you're like too many times. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, that's gone. That's gone forever. So I mean, <laughs> we're gonna get BSU is no Huntsville guys. Like we obviously know this. I mean. BSU's your main competitor right now. They're a little bit the BGSU last year, but without one letter in it. So, I mean, <laughs> it's been incredibly close and close. And I just, what are you looking for strategy-wise to kind of keep them out of the game, right? Like, do you work on stuff in practice? Since you were, have played them, what, this is this is like your, this will be like your fourth time playing them this year, yeah. somewhere around that. So, I mean, I feel like you kind of got to know what to expect from them strategy-wise, what they do, how they play. But is there anything new that you guys are practicing or, like, looking forward on? No, I wouldn't say anything new. I mean, uh, you look last time we played them, uh, they be, they got the better of us. Um, we put up, I want to say, 50-some shots mm -hmm. uh, against them. And then, uh, you know, that's credit to their goaltender. I actually played with him in junior a little bit, so I, I know yeah. him pretty well. And, you know, I, I told him after the game that he, he did a fabulous job. I mean, he made it hard to score. So I think this week we're just really focusing on executing and trying to put him by him. And, uh you know, again, use our team speed and just use our depth as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of like Rip said, we played them a couple times. Uh, obviously, Driscoll played unbelievable at Saturday night. Uh, but I think it just comes down to execution, like Ruby said, uh, just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and hopefully that will bring us on the right outcome of both games. Yeah, you got you. You talk about depth, and I've talked about depth in this team since the very, very, very beginning. You know, you have a special way of looking at the lineups, right, and saying we can run four deep and we can put Nick on one line and, you know, Jake and Mark and Parker and even Nathan Smith and Lucas Souter and you've got, you know, defensive Andy Carroll and Reese and Edwin. I mean, it's just – I just think about it and I think of the lineup and it's absolutely crazy and you still got guys fighting for spots and you even got Wyatt and Andy. And So can you guys just talk about, like, the depth of this team and how you can use that to your advantage, especially facing Bemidji? Because I think that's going to be big when they get tired. You've got you've got so many lines, you've got so many positions that maybe you're not as tired, and that makes you gets you the one up on them. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> you got you got to look back. Uh, I mean, you can look through this whole year. It's just injury after injury, and uh, you know we've got we we we've played healthy at times, but uh, I mean, you just got to look. It's always been next man up. Uh, coach really stresses that, but that's how he recruits here. You know, like. He doesn't. Rec he recruits ever everybody's position for a specific way. Um, I mean, me personally, I know I know my role. I know what I gotta do, and you know, Mark knows his role. And he knows what he needs to do, and you know, that's just kind of the buy-in. And uh, I think the younger guys, you want to call them, uh, they they really embrace that as well. Um, clearly, people are still fighting for spots in the lineup, but uh, the opportunity has knocked, and you know, they try to make the most out of it as anybody would. But like I said, uh, any injury can happen at any time in any situation. So, I mean, everyone's always ready, and we try to use that uh, depth uh, to our advantage. So. Yeah. You think about injuries, I think about, did you guys see the the Carolina game? They, oh, yeah. they, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. One goalie got injured. The goaltender? Yeah, yes, the emergency, yeah, the emergency goaltender. What? I didn't yeah. think that good. I didn't think that was like a thing. Like, I, you know, you always have that third goaltender on handy. We have Evan, and we got him this year as like a walk-on, which is crazy. But... I didn't think that was like a thing that could have ever happened, and he like literally won the Stole game. I was yeah, like a um, cool. Zamboni yeah. driver. I was like, I'd like to think I'm the emergency yeah. backup. Yeah, player, right? so I think I think if we we'd go team vote, and I think I might win that. But really, <laughs> yeah, I we'll, feel like we'll take a poll later. But <laughs> yeah. we'll put it on social media. So can, we'll have to ask our goaltender coach, right? Podsy. Yeah, <laughs> I think he'd give me the upper hand. So I think it's cool too to see like how Evan got on because yeah, he's a walk on, right? Like yeah. they kind of like pulled almost pulled him off of like the streets kind of thing right because yeah. he was a student and he was like oh, i'm gonna be done like, yeah I'm he, not gonna it's do a pretty it. cool story i mean uh i've had a, a few co a few pretty cool conversations with him about how he just he was done with hockey you know mm -hmm. uh, he played high school for i want to say white bear lake yep and uh yeah, he was done just going to school here and then the whole uh situation opened up for him and you know he he showed himself that he can compete and you know actually i would say he's He's a very hardworking kid, and I want to give him that. And, you know, he's probably made the most improvements out of anybody on our roster nice. um, this whole year. So, I, I mean, you got to give the kid credit. He, he's enjoying it. He's loving every moment. He's a great teammate. Mm -hmm. He's crazy young. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's special. Like, 
he he fits in pretty well with our group mm -hmm. and uh he's a, he's a really good kid you look at like i was looking at like stuff and just stats and like whatever and i was like oh yeah everyone's old because they go to juniors you know you're a little bit older and then you look at him he's like born in like 2001 or something i was like oh makes me feel old so. i'm old <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of, but i think i mean i just can't i just can't believe that situation because like it's kind of like yeah and hockey's not a thing that especially in college hockey like you can't just be like i'm gonna yeah, come right out of high school crazy. right because you guys go to juniors how i mean to have that how many years like two three i don't know how many years you guys spend at juniors exactly yeah it's different for everybody i yeah. mean uh some schools like to recruit young because they know the, they'll have the guys that play one two years and mm -hmm. leave but you know coach hastings likes to likes to get a little bit older older guys and uh guys that for the most part he knows they'll they'll commit for four years mm -hmm. and you know so I mean, each school's different, and each person's different. So I mean, I I played three years, but I kind of went in technically early. I I played my senior year of high school, and uh, it went at you. So okay, I would say two to three years are probably around yeah. the average. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into it right now. But are you guys in the right spot to be at for like playoffs? Are you guys going in the right path? I would say like you right where you want to be for playoff time coming up on this game because you're playing tight games playing good games, playing maybe arguably your best game, like best hockey you have played all year in these last couple of games. So what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, last couple of weeks just in practice and even shows in the games is kind of the switch over from regular season to kind of playoff hockey. You know, it's hard fought games. You got to make sure you're paying attention to every little detail because you don't know what, if you don't do it, it could end up in the back of your net and that could be, you know, the end of your season. So... I think that's kind of a mindset we've taken into practice and trying to work on, uh, obviously, in the games to try to make it as far as we can. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, okay. I mean, uh, you, you look all the way even back to Bowling Green and Bowling Green and then uh, Anchorage and Anchorage. Uh, you know, those weren't easy games. Those were those were playoff-like mm -hmm. games. You go down to nothing uh, in a, an opposing team's building, and Bowling Green's probably one of the hardest places to play. Yep. Clearly, Anchorage isn't an easy place to play either, but... Uh, you got to fight for every point you get there, and, you know, that's a playoff mentality, and I think our team's kind of – we're fortunate that we've uh, dealt with those experiences and come out on top of it mm -hmm. because it, it'll help us in the long run and uh, set us up for success. So, I mean, right now we're playing some good hockey, but uh, clearly, like I said, we can always be playing better, and, you know, we're excited for playoffs, and I would say every person in that locker room is uh, itching to keep going. So Yeah, so, I mean, kind of in the locker room team mentality – this is almost essentially the, like the same team we've talked about as last year, and you guys were so talented last year, and to think that you've gained so much little, but I mean, Coach Hastings has said, you know, this is a, maybe the team to do it, right? This is the team, do something that maybe you guys haven't done in like a long, long time, and even getting national champions. Do you guys think that this is the team to do it? This is the stronger team, this is the one that this is your moment, and you guys are trying to fight tooth and nail for, and you think you can do it, and you believe in this team? Yeah, I mean, I believe in this team more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no different than the previous years. You know, I believe in those teams as well. I mean, uh, clearly it's, it's the game of hockey. You go to the tournament, it's a uh, win to advance, and if you lose, you're done. But, uh, you know, I think Coach has done a really good job with this squad and uh, the recruiting part. Um, clearly it adds to our depth. And, you know, I believe in this team, and uh, I think we've got guys that believe in each other, which is even more important. So. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this could be a great squad to go on a great run. Absolutely. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a we have a really special group mm -hmm. in that locker room. I mean, just looking at this weekend, just the unselfishness of everyone, just playing for each other. Um, but at the same time, we want just focusing on every day and not looking too far ahead because I know sometimes that can hurt teams if you do that. Yep. So we just focus on every day and practice and looking forward to the, each weekend. Mm -hmm. If I could have a dollar for every time I've asked a question and then they're like, we're looking ahead day by day, day by day. Like even us, it's Mark, it's Nick, it's anyone on this podcast. Because as a fan, you always, and someone who loves this part, you always want to look ahead. You always want to be like, is this going to be the team? Is this going to do it? What about playoffs? But you guys always talk about that day by day mentality and that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard. I mean, uh, you, you want to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly after uh, the past couple experiences in the tournament, like our class, that that's, that's our goal, get back there and try to create some mm -hmm. history there. But, I mean, none of that's possible unless you, you get some business done in, in the middle of it. So, uh if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't really hold on to the present, you, you won't really get a bright future. So yep. that's our job. And I mean, coach has always told us and, you know, we've seen it with our past seniors personally for me from three years going, uh, 
you know, it's just something that we don't want to we don't want to leave this program mm -hmm. wishing we could have done more. And uh, so that's why we're trying to go that day by day route. Absolutely. Yeah. I that's perfect. I, I don't really have well much said, to add. Nick. Good job. I think that's everything that you can do with long process end game can't look at anything forward yeah. you know this is what we're doing in the moment and this is going to be the best for us and i think that this is team is special this this team is you know you always want to think the one that this team could do it this team could do it i think that every year about the minnesota vikings and here i am <laughs> so let's let's say that about that but i mean that's all we got for the podcast guys i'm good luck to you up to bsu thank you really thank important you. series i hope that guy i hope that goes well i know it's gonna be a little nerve-wracking, but... Yeah, we'll so, do our best, don't worry. Right, right? <laughs> so that is all we got. This episode is out now on Apple and Spotify. Please subscribe. Thank you to Nick and Reese for coming on, and we will catch you guys next week. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.